Let me get this out. They are very loving folks. Barb and Terry were the uh, type of volunteers that would step forward, that you could count on, that you could call in the middle of the night and say, hey, what you doing tomorrow morning? And they would be there. Terry was born on October 28, 1942. He was the eldest of three siblings. His mother Lucille and father Arthur were both influential in inspiring Terry to find his path of humanitarianism. Barb was born to Agnes and Jim Schneiderwind on September 20, 1935. She was the second youngest of five siblings. Barb's father worked for Northern Natural Gas and her mother was a homemaker. Barb worked for a surgical department when she was given many unique opportunities. Barb met her ex-husband and had eight wonderful children. After graduating high school, Terry started to feel a greater calling. He decided to explore the priesthood. Becoming an ordained priest on May 25, 1969, he received his first assignment in Panama, Iowa. Serving three months, Terry eventually made his way to Council Bluffs, where he met Barb while setting up a Teens Encounter Christ program. And we just got to be really good friends, which was great because we were friends first and then got more serious after that, so. The couple shared a love of volunteerism and quickly became involved with the Red Cross. They kept busy going out and aiding individuals and towns in need, and combined with their hobby of ham radio, they were huge assets. One incident, however, set the tone for their futures in volunteering. I think the one incident that stands out is uh, when we worked the uh, Flight 232 disaster in Sioux City. The Red Cross moved survivors to Briarcliff, where Barb was staged and awaiting their arrival. Terry was staged at the crash site and was able to communicate to the others through his ham radio skills. Their glasses were lost, their prescriptions, their money, their suitcases, everything was lost and they were truly walking wounded. Through all of their involvement with the Red Cross, Terry and Barb saw a lot of difficult moments and events, but also experienced a lot of good. Both were asked to become teaching instructors for various programs. The couple believed this prepared them for their next adventure, NODA. As NODA stands for No One Dies Alone, the whole point is to make their transition a little easier, if we can, uh, lessen any fears, any anxieties, and to be, be there. Every case is different, but for Barb, one case really struck a chord. We had a gentleman who had been in the hospital for a long time, and he was homeless. So we sat with him. We were lucky enough to talk to our so social services person who knew one of the uh, morticians in Council Bluffs, and he was able to find a place that he designated that we could take his ashes to. And so the hospital administration, Terry and I, a couple of other NOTA volunteers, and buried him, his ashes. He wasn't homeless anymore because he was home safe now. The couple has had a long history of volunteering with Mercy Hospital. They have been active volunteers for over 20 years. They can be seen at any given time organizing Mercy's used book sale, stopping in to serve on the guild board, or just saying hello. The Lindsleys are somebody that the patients and guests and staff can go to and talk to. They remember the littlest things from everybody that they have talked to and, they've, and that they've touched. And I think that really truly means a lot to be able to come back and it's like you're home. It's like you're talking to your best friend. Terry and I are really lucky to be volunteering at Mercy Hospital. Every single person there loves that hospital. Please join us in congratulating Terry and Barb Lindsley, 2018 Heritage Award recipients for Arts and Humanities.